Hey guys, welcome to seven drum editing tips in seven days. Today we're going to be talking about adding samples in Logic specifically to your drum kit. So if you're a drummer specifically, you may be against samples because you know you work hard on choosing the right gear, on achieving your own sound, on tuning, all these kinds of things to get the unique sound that you're after. And you may think that adding samples to that is too artificial, it's not you, and therefore you may just be against it. But as a production technique, it can take the sound of your kit to a whole new level. And it can really be the difference between a, a song sounding like a demo and sounding like a actual professional studio uh, production. So you could use plugins like the Slate Trigger 2, like I use, um, but this is over £100, $100, and that may be above the budget you want to spend on something like that now. But there is a free way to do this in Logic, and I'm going to show you how to do this now. So what you'll essentially be doing is you'll be creating a instrument track, a MIDI track. You'll be adding one of Logic's uh, drum sampler, uh, drum virtual instruments into it and you'll be basically just using that as your sample. So the first thing you want to do is select the whole track that you want to sample and make sure that the whole track is joined together, there's no gaps because then you'll only obviously select part of it. So we've got the kick track selected here. So what we need to go to after selecting that is track replace our double drum track. So now it's analyzing the transients, analyzing the hits. And what it will do is it will create a whole new MIDI track for you. And look, it's detected all the hits for you. So you can see there, um, it's done a pretty good job. All you need to do is go over this and make sure that it's actually picked them all up correctly. So I'm just going to take you through this here. So mode, you can choose replacement or doubling. I'd obviously suggest doubling because replacement will override this. Um, all you want to do is reinforce your tones. You don't want to replace them completely unless, of course, your recording is bad and you do want to replace them completely. So you've got the threshold here. This dictates how sensitive um, this is. So say if it's too sensitive and it's picking up mic bleed, you can lower this or increase it rather, and that'll pick up less um, and be less sensitive. If it's not picking up enough, you can go the other way. But as you can see, <laughs> it's picking up all that bleed. So it was pretty absolutely spot on when uh, we first loaded this up. So it was at minus 12 dB. So trigger note here. So I just know this off the top of my head that C1 is the trigger note, not C3. So you can see there, kick one, kick two, either one would be fine. You can use this to set the average attack time. Say if it's consistently picking up the transients at the wrong point um, and it it's giving you a sort of flammy effect, it's not quite perfectly in time with the audio. You can use that to offset here but I prefer to do this manually, even though it takes a lot more time. So what you're gonna do is press OK, and there we go. That's the sample track sorted for you. So if I was to get really in depth with this, I'd get up real close to these, and you can see they're slightly delayed, so I'd go through these and I'd just drag these back slightly. So you can see they're slightly late as well. So it might be that all these are just about the same amount of lateness from the original audio. So it could have been helpful to actually, while that window was up, just alter that attack time and that would have brought them all um, backwards so that I'll be a bit more in line with this but you'll be able to hear this once you load up a sample in this um, in this MIDI track here. So simply what you'll do while you're on this track now go onto drum kit and select the drum kit that you want to use as a sample easy. 
So SoCo is the one I usually use. So you can see that's loaded that up now. If we click into that, click on the kick drum, and we can actually choose the different type of kick drum that we want. There's three options here. And we can also tune that so it fits a bit more nicely with that original kick. Dampen it, or we can even increase the volume within this little um, virtual instrument section here. So there we go. Um, if we solo both these together now, you'll be able to hear that it's reinforced the kick um, with this little sample. So you can hear it's just a bit more fuller. It's um, got a bit more air to it. And that is a whole point in reinforcing your kit tones with samples. It's going to make your kit just sound that big, bigger, that bit fuller, and it's really going to step up the professionalism of your tracks. So from there, I just repeat the same process for my snare top um, and for my other shells, all the toms. Um, and that is basically it. And you'll find yourself with a much better overall kick sound in a full production and your music that you produce is gonna sound much better.